Welcome to my round 5 match of GP Karakis. This time it's versus Hamid Tribal, and I'm on Rejuvenation List Rejuvenation, same deck that I won last GP with. Only difference is that I'm running the GP promo version of Children of Clouds now. And Hamid Tribal is on Bug Pressure, so it's a solitary pressure deck that looks to dump cards into their graveyard and then use cards that benefit from having lots of cards in your graveyard. So looking at my hand, uh, not a very good hand. Does I'm a tribal run removal? Well, they're even the, they're on the play, so they can kill off-world surveyors pretty easily. And other, if the off-world surveyors get killed, I have nothing to do until turn four. So I don't think that's keepable. I'm not gonna mulligan. Oh, that hand's really bad. Log a recluse plus lands. Okay, this is a good hand. I'm gonna keep this. So I get turn two. We call forgotten aeons, and I'm bottoming. I guess. Off-world servers and children clouds. I can't really guarantee that I'm going to draw another land, so... Yeah. If I do draw a land, then... Oh well. Oh, I touch wilds. Okay, that's perfect. Get to do turn 2 and touch wilds for 3. Which is literally the best... Or the nuttiest draw that this deck can get. So... Thermal Lager Recluse. Putting on best land to play tapped. Basically the best use of Lager Recluse, because... Since it's tapped, you, you weren't going to pay your life anyways. So, how many counter spells does Harmon Tribal run main deck? They don't run any counter spells main deck. Okay, that's wonderful. But they do have discard spells, so yeah, they can fill dead me like that. So, well, they're both three drops, so it doesn't matter which one it's named. Let's see. Because there actually is a debate here. If I untouch wilds and then just draw nothing afterwards, then I'm kind of screwed. Or no, I, I can discard Recall Forgotten Aeons and then just untouch wilds into Recall Forgotten Aeons. So hopefully Hong Tribal doesn't have a second discard spell. If they do, then yeah, I'm definitely uh, in quite the pickle, because then I have absolutely nothing to do. Seems like they do have a second discard spell though, so yeah, that's unfortunate. At least I can beat down with a Laga Recluse. And yeah, there goes my uh, Untouched Wilds. So now I'm looking to top deck into something good. And I'm going to fetch a Lush Oasis here. A land, not what I need. So how, much, how many corpse beds does Hama Tribal run? Or how much main deck Grave Hate do they even run? Okay, uh, no, no main deck Grave Hate other than the corpse bed that they already played. So, 15 Grove, swing for 3, end the turn. What does Hama Tribal have on 3 mana? They're gonna play Bear Duckling. Well, at least Log of Reckless attacks through that, and they're kind of far away from transforming it, but then again, they could just self mold bunch to transform it next turn. I guess I, I'm also slightly worried about Veldez coming down soon. Anyway, sack this for Forest Plains. Let's see, hopefully I top deck something that's not a land. And that is a land. Annoying, but okay. Play Way of Fears right now because I wanted to get basics out of my deck. I think Bear Duckling's probably in range of transforming next turn. But I'm just going to try to get as much damage as I can now. Well, the good news is, even if I keep drawing lands, at least I have Recall Forgotten Aeons in Graveyard. So eventually, I'll be able to do something. Eventually, mean, meaning once I get to 7 mana. But if they play Valdez here, uh, how far behind am I in the race? Oh, they decide to shock themselves. Okay, so they're dead to 3 Lager Recluse swings. It's actually not that slow of a clock. Like, that thing, Lager Recluse is a real threat to Hama Tribal here. I mean, of course, they probably have removal for it anyways, but. Especially once Bear Duckling transforms. Oh, they're going to Nightmares on Seeing. Uh, Hardcast Nightmares on Seeing. Yeah, that's not a problem. It doesn't mean Lager Reckless can't attack anymore, but... Really, all I need to do is to draw into one of my top end cards and I'm, I'll be fine. Bear Duckling pecks me for one. And I'll sack Wayfair Shrine for, I guess, another forest. Bear Duckling doesn't transform this turn. That's nice. And another land. Uh, that's not good. So there's no point in swinging this turn, right? Yeah, it just gets... Just dies to horror. And there's nothing I can do from Graveyard, so I'll play this tapped and then pass the turn. I guess that prevents Spear Duckling from attacking this turn. Do I trump with Lager Recluse on the horror token? Well, no, because Spear Duckling flips into a... Uh, yeah, it flips into a 3-3, three, three, so... If I pull up attacks with the horror token, then I can attack Lager Recluse next turn. 
Actually, I actually, I, yeah, I'm pretty concerned about Valdez too because that's 11 damage to my face this turn, and maybe I shouldn't have played the land. Well, no, because I need to be ramping. Oh, they're okay. No, they're not. Not actually not attacking with the four either. What are they afraid of? Birds? Oh yeah, birds. Right. They're playing around birds. I'm perfectly fine with. I'm perfectly fine with that. So upkeep. I'm gonna sack a fetch and get. Blue land probably, so where's shifting grove or shifting blade? Here we go. That's not what I need either. Yeah, I guess one of the problems with this deck is that if you get discarded and then just draw nothing, that's how you lose. You get play shifting grove and crack for the forest plains. Or actually, well, no, because right, I should be playing that out my lands because I need to, but because I'm working towards playing recall forgotten aeons for my graveyard. So I'm dead to the removal spell, I guess. Hopefully they keep playing around the children of clouds at least. Monkey shines, okay sure. They're probably looking for a removal spell here. Seems like they found something they like, because they didn't bin anything. And that's a removal spell, and I think that's the game. So yeah, they're probably not playing around children of clouds this time. Uh, okay, yeah. Do nothing but lands for the remainder of the game, so that's a bit unfortunate. Looking at my opponent's deck, four top loss and four sealed tombs. That's gonna be really annoying to deal with, but that's all I have to worry about. Looking at what's good here, Orban Traders is really good. Thing Suns is really good, and I want Sacrificial Bowl. But do I want Sacrificial Bowl? Eh, I'm not sure. Is the Nimble Things good here too? I mean, yeah, it is, but is it better than what already? Oh yeah, I need single target removal. I think I take out off-world servers because those things die to removal way too easily. And I take out the combo, right? Because that gets disassembled by discard. Actually, do I want Betsy's boot in instead of Sacrificial Bowl? Probably. Like, I mean, going with this setup means I have no way to deal with the horror tokens other than chump blocking them for a point. But maybe that's just better than what I'm doing right now. Yeah, Betsy's boot is probably good. Like, what does it not kill? Right, it, if it goes that late, hopefully I've already ramped up so I can deal with those guys by just going over the top of them. Uh, not having sacrificial bowl though. Well, it's not like I can really afford to keep paying mad to keep the graveyard clear, so I'll go, I'll go with this. Hopefully I don't regret it. This hand is probably way too slow. It does have untouched wilds and setting sun to catch me back up in flawless world too. I think I might just keep and hope that it doesn't come back to bite me. I really wish I don't have to keep this though. I think I'll risk it. I'll, I'll keep. I'm just hoping I don't get any of these guys thought blossomed. Did they also run one mana counter spells? No, they don't. Okay, maybe I should have just hard mulligan for untouched wilds. Or, I mean, a one mana ramp spell. But they're gonna Valdez me. Name me low. Okay, they snag the children. Are they going to seal the children next turn? I can't really stop that from happening. If they do that, then I'm forced to rely on my uh, revelations to win. Which means I won't be able to attack past giant horror tokens. Let's see, uh, Plains Island. Okay, so I do get to three lands, but they can probably answer and touch files before I can get to make use of it. On the bright side, at least I have a lot of things to do in my hand. If one of my things gets stolen, then at least I still have something else to do. I'm gonna play down Jar Champion. Yeah, no problem. Are they stuck on one land, or are they just playing their lands out slowly? Yeah, they're doing so Oh, okay. Oof. Oh no, it's not that bad. Because now Turn of the Clouds can't be sealed, and I still get two lands off Untouched Wilds, which is quite good. It's not insane anymore, but it is still quite good. Let's see, yeah, Wayfair Shrine, sack both of those guys, Untouched Wilds. And then hopefully, now that I could go to 5 mana, I don't have to worry about anything. So, I need double white, right? You get double white or double blue first. Uh, I'll get double white first because setting sun. Yeah. So at least I get to do an un uncontested Untouched Wilds. I still have to worry about the Jar Champion. Which is slowly growing, but Setting Sun will deal with it, assuming it doesn't get countered. The way my opponent played kind of suggests that they don't have a counter spell in hand. 
Or at least they didn't have a counter spell that they can, that they can cast in hand. Because if they did, they would definitely held up a counter spell for Untouched Wilds. Now they're going to play the Nether Muck Bruiser. Uh, not a problem. I might just setting Sun here just to clear the board. Oh, Sullen Secrets. Okay, fine. Guess that they're taking Setting Sun now. Unfortunately, I don't have another copy of Setting Sun, so I can't conjure real eyes for it. I think my opponent might also be thinking about whether to take Conjure or Flawless, Flawless World. They're just going to take Setting Sun, which is the obvious decision. And then I might have to Conjure Realities for... Or actually, I, may be, I might be able to Conjure for Bessie's Boot and kill the Jar Champion that way. And afterwards, I can play Flawless World. And I have to do it in that order because Jar Champion will grow if I don't uh, Bessie's Boot it first. And I'm assuming... Uh, wait, actually, do I kill Denny's? No, I killed Jarrah Champion because it grows. Okay, so the order I have to do it in is Conjuring Eyes first. Or, no, I, right, I can't Flawless World afterwards because it costs... Okay, so in that case, I guess I just Conjuring Eyes and then pass the turn. Doesn't feel that good, but I'm almost, I'm almost all the way there to Coalescing Flawless World, so... I guess I can afford to slow down for a bit. Or do I just Flawless World here? Jar Champion can only attack alone, so it's not hitting me for that much. And like, I want to save Andre Eyes for something that's more threatening. And, uh, yeah, I'll just Andre Eyes now. And then I pass the turn. The main thing I'm worried about is if my opponent has a counter spell for my Flawless World, because then I'll be out of, out of options. Or not just counter spell, uh, Thought Blossom, which will exile my Flawless World, so I can't even coalesce it. Well, they're going to pass spell Dez here, so it kind of implies that they don't have a counter spell. Because they would definitely would have held up a counter spell here. And yeah, I'll fetch now. The forest, and then. Then substrate him. Track this guy for Forest Island. So, another land, but I have Flawless for all I can place. So, I can just draw more cards. And they'll tap like this Flawless World. More lands. Uh. I can touch wilds here. I guess that's pretty good. And I just keep up, keep back Bessie's boot to block, right? They don't have removal because they would have used it already. They had it. They might have even boarded out removal. What, uh, four... How many fetch do I have left in deck? Uh, probably enough to... Oh, I still want to preserve life, so... Yeah, I'll shifting grove. Untouch wilds. Sack shifting grove for forest plains. Touch wilds gets back. Four lands, and I pass the turn. The main thing I'm worried about is if, if they seal the tomb to Flawless World, because then I won't be able to do anything. So hopefully that doesn't happen, because I can't really prevent it from happening either. Oh, they're just going to concede. I guess they don't have sealed the tomb. Oh, and they draw lands. That's unfortunate. Let's so see how this game turned out. Do I want to win the combo? Because, I mean, like getting an early combo is a way to win. Eh, guess I'll run this back. I feel like I should have Sacrificial Bull somewhere in there, but I can't find room for it, and it's probably just worse than other options. So yeah, let's hope for a good hand, and really good. this would be a really good hand in a slower matchup, but my opponent has Discard and Counter Spell, so I can't afford to keep this. And even I'm even on draw, so yeah, can't afford to keep this. Uh, Forbidden Treasure, on okay, fine, I'll keep this. So what do I bottom here? I bottom Children Clouds? Yeah, maybe. Uh, the turn when Bell does time? No, it's time when Lucky shines. Okay, sure. Draw to the clouds again, anyways. This is getting a left oasis, so I won't be able to casting. I won't be able to cast children in the clouds for a while. And they're running up air duckling. Okay, that dies to Bessie's brood. Assuming I draw a land here. Oh, okay, that's well. That's a lot of untouched wilds and not a lot of lands. That is a problem, but hopefully. Doesn't end up mattering. So yeah, please draw a land next turn. Preferably land that makes itself in uh, prefer a land that finds itself into the graveyard. Well, okay, that that's fine. I think I might play Betsy's Brood instead of Untouched Wilds because I want to play around Thought Blossom. And the way my opponent's holding up mana like this really suggests that they're they have Thought Blossom in hand. So uh yeah. Fetching Left Oasis. Actually, what if they are holding instant speed removal? Do they even 
they even have instant speed removal left? Really, they ported out the pith modes, right? Okay, yeah. And they're gonna end up turning reveal on eternities. So, no idea if they were actually holding a counter spell there, but I couldn't really risk it. And plus, I only had one fetch on graveyard anyway, so untouched wilds wouldn't have done much. They're, they have nine cards in the yard. Okay, that's. The, so, they need to have my are a pretty big threat now. You know, stolen secrets. Sure. What do you name? Sorcery. How are going to take Conjure with Eyes then? Yeah, I'm kind of in trouble here because I need to draw into something that does stuff. They need to have Black Moozer and that thing's huge. And I think I'll just be trumping it for, from now on. More Untouched Wilds. Not what I'm looking for. Uh, do I keep a Forbidden Treasures? Well, my opponent knows that I'm holding Forbidden Treasures, so the only thing Forbidden Treasures really hits is. Yeah, the only thing that Forbidden Treasures hits is Nightmares on Scene. So how screwed am I if I tap out for Untouched Wilds and then get Nightmares Unseen? Uh, pretty screwed, probably. At the same time, I need lands. I'm sure the cloud, so the worst comes to worst, I have three chump blockers. Uh, yeah, I'll tap out for it. Really unideal Untouched Wilds, but oh well. Okay, they're going to kill that, sure. They're just going to pass, so they're holding up Thought Blossom. They draw land, they're, that is a land. So let's see, I can untouch wilds and f get back. So I can fetch, fetch, untouch wilds, get back two things again. That puts me up to 7 mana. And hopefully I can draw out the Thought Blossom with Forbidden Treasure. The next turn I use Children Clouds. Well, it's better than whatever I'm currently doing, so... I think I do go for it. Now, what's the chances I get uh, one shot by this thing? Uh, so, yeah, it's probably pretty safe. Yeah, let's fetch now. Hard to glade. Uh, do I need double? I need double blue. I think glade. Untouched wilds. You counter. They're not going to counter. That's not why I wanted to draw out their counter and spells that way, but it seems like that's not going to happen. So I guess next turn I children's for four with forbidden treasure backup, and that's really and I hope that that gives me enough time to find a way to turn the game around. Oh, they're not gonna bend any more cards before swinging. What are they possibly holding then? More than ether muck bruisers. Well, they get blocked by children's at least. So I'm looking for. I want to fetch now in case I don't draw any of my fetchables. I'm running out fetchables. So, Resplendent Substratum, and then Island. And Shifting Cascade. Well, lands are fine here. I need to Children's now to not die. And I know they're holding a Thought Blossom. But they know, I'm, they know that I'm holding a Forbidden Treasure. And do I do it now? What if they're holding two Thought Blossoms? They don't have the mana for two Thought Blossoms. Okay, I'll set a stop on upkeep then. Hopefully that buys me enough time to stabilize. And again, the token, uh, GP Promo doesn't have the tokens linked, so I can make my own tokens. Oh wait, they do have the tokens, huh? I mean, it, I didn't actually realize Promo Verde and Children Clouds had their own tokens, but... Completely wrong character, but, uh, compared... Completely wrong characters, but... Eh, good enough. So I'm just going to jump here. Well, I'm still not doing anything, so maybe they do have something. What are they holding? Probably reveal eternities and some removal. Anyway, he's going to sack for Forest Island. Oh, Nariba, wonderful. That's exactly what I. Well, it's not exactly what I need, but it very much is something that I want. It allows me to, allows me to turn doing nothing into advantage. So, can I have four ten touch wilds here? Gets back to real lands, but actually, I am out of vegetables, right? I have one fetch. Yeah, so the touch rod's not good. I'm just going to play, play Nariva and pass. And keeping untouch touch rods also means that Valdez isn't active, which is another upside to that. Oh, right, I'm playing fetch Ares Pillar. Well, I get one more round of chumping, and then hopefully Nariva draws me into something that lets me swing the game. Also, yeah, they have to tap out to use the Ares Pillar, but that's another advantage. Actually, can I, can I think about it? Can I have a, did I have traded with one of the Nether Mike back then? Or maybe I was... Well, technically I could 
I can claim that I was playing around uh, Hamid Tribal playing or getting spell uh, stuff into graveyard instant speed by not trading there. So yeah. Okay, so again, the reactivation that's good. And the ball things. Okay, that deals with one of the Denise Muck boosters. And by draw my last fetchable. And yeah, now Wayfair Shrine is useless. And the Vel things will let me survive. Uh, I still have to deal with the Aries Pillar beats eventually. But hopefully, I pull ahead enough by then. So, what? This costs 5. Uh, so, that means I won't have enough energy by activation afterwards. So, I can just. So, let's see. Forbidden Treasure. End of all things. Okay, so I can untouch Wilds this turn. And that gets back one land. But might be worth it anyways. I mean, I'm not doing anything else, right? I want to keep it just as discard fodder. It protects against Valdez high, I guess. All I want to Valdez low just to hit birds currently, so no point in keeping that around. Is there any reason to. Oh, what if I end of all. Do I have enough for end of all things plus end of all things? No? Okay. I'll untouch Valdez back one land. And end the turn. Uh, set stop on upkeep. Wait, no, I need to. Okay, they might have double Thought Blossom. So how much, how badly does double Thought Blossom wreck me? I'd, uh, yeah. So I'll tap like this. And of all things, one of the Denise are Muck Bruisers. Okay, do, they, do they have double Thought Blossom? If they do, I lose. They do. Okay, that's unfortunate. Well, I don't lose right now. There's still a way for me to draw out a bit. I just need to top deck birds and then play it. So, top deck birds, please. Lost World. Uh, that's, no, for me, it's a, it's a top blossom, so. Yeah, that's really bad for me. There's something I can do? Not really. I can Nariva, I guess. Uh, that's probably what I have to do. You can't do realities. Okay. So that would have been good if uh, Hammer Tribe didn't exile Forbidden Treasures there. I wonder if I should have. Was there a way for me to play around double forbidden treasures? I don't think there was. Right. Okay, no, they're not going to play around birds at instant speed. Okay, and just I just lose. Seems like I won't be making it to top eight this GP. I think the deck did a pretty good job at what it was supposed to do. I th think I, I mean I could have played better this game. I'm not sure where exactly where, but actually Mulligan decisions probably. Because I did keep a pretty slow hand this game. I, I could have like hard mulligan for something that will let me get a turn 2 untouched vault or recall forgotten Aeon. And that might have been what I should have done. But yeah.